Hi, I'll be talking with representatives of the Stair Step Foundation next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Lisa Tabor, along with guest host John Forty. I'm helping to host the show while Mike Wassenaar is on sabbatical. Uh, I'm talking today with Helen Jackson Lockett L. of the Stair Step Foundation's new program, There is a Balm, and Loretta Bush of the, uh, the, health, the site health coordinator for Mount Olivet Baptist Church. Thank you so much for being here. Sorry, I completely butchered <laughs> the introductions, <laughs> but um, I am sure we're gonna have a great conversation. So, um, one of you, tell me about the Stair Step Foundation and there is a balm. And I said it's new, but how new is it? Well, Stair Step Foundation has been in existence for since 1992. Now, however, the There Is a Bomb Health Initiative um, began in March of 2002. Okay. And this was Stair Step responded to an RFP that the Minnesota Department of Health um, had um, sent to the community. Okay. And we applied and they accepted our grant. And for the last eight years, we have been working as a great collaborative with the churches, the community of faith in the metro area, because it's Minneapolis and St. Paul, uh -huh. around health disparity, it, the elimination of health disparity. Um, however, um, I, it's sad to say that our funding just recently ended in June of, of this year. The Minnesota Department of Health did not um, renew our, our funding, but that won't stop us because we are very intentional about um, addressing the health of our community because as you look at the, if you look at the state of Minnesota, um, we are in the top <laughs> 2% uh, being, and, and, is, and is thought of as the healthiest uh, one of the healthiest state in the nation. However, when you look at people of color, the disparity is just enormous. Mm -hmm. And so we need to continue this work. We cannot stop the work from, con from going on. And you made some assumptions, or Stair Step made some assumptions in building There is a Balm mm -hmm. um, about how to address those disparities effectively. Mm -hmm. What were some of those assumptions? Yes. Well, one is um, that we, First, I should say, we establish a relationship with the community of faith. Over the years, Steer Step Foundation um, mission is to restore the spirit of community. And in restoring the spirit of the community, one institution that have always stood in the Africa, stands strong in the African American community is the church. And so over the years, um, our CEO uh, Alfred Babington Johnson um, have established a relationship with those pastors over the years. As a matter of fact, they meet on a monthly basis um, to address some of the issues that's going on within or Af in the African American community. However, one of the things that he sees as restoring the spirit of community is to help to build the capacity of the churches mm -hmm. so that they can better address the issues that, that faces us on a daily okay. basis. So health is just <coughs> one of the issues. Mm -hmm. And we have been working together um, on the health issues um, since 2002, as I mentioned. And the unique, I would say the most unique thing uh, uh, about this health initiative is that we have been able to get the support of the pastors within those churches in order to make this work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been trying to get in the African American <laughs> community churches over the years, yeah. but they missed a very, um, a very important piece, which mm -hmm. is the relationship that we have with the pastors. And they in turn see the needs because they have people coming 
um, to them sometimes, and they know about different issues in their congregation of people with diabetes, and sometimes even, uh, even they themselves, the pastors, have experienced um, some of those chronic health issues too. So what better way to get them on board is to have them um, being supportive of the health initiative and seeing that there's a need in our congregation uh, around health. And I think it's uh, what you just shared with us about helping to build capacity of churches, mm -hmm. you do directly through that program. Yes, yes. Um, And so how, share a little bit about how you do that. Well, one is um, we provide, um, as the program director of the, of the health initiative, I do a lot of that legwork so that the person within the congregation don't really the representative from that congregation don't really have to do the mm -hmm. legwork. So I have partnership with the American Heart Association, Diabetes okay. Association, American Cancer Society. So sort of on the organizational yes. relationships mm -hmm. exactly. then with others. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I have connected with their outreach um, organization, the outreach coordinators within those organizations who have been looking for an opportunity to really get that information into the churches, and this is a great opportunity. And I continue to seek and to establish new networks, and not just only for large organizations, but also sometimes for um, small grassroots organizations, mm -hmm. or what is even more essential is the clinics in our community. Oh, sure. So we have worked closely with Open Cities Health, um, Health Center, and also in Minneapolis, um, North Point Health and Wellness, um, and also the Fremont Clinic, the Fremont Clinics. Mm -hmm. um, so we not only um, try to get just a large organization, but local, because the local community clinics are really meeting you know, the needs within right. the immediate community. Right. And so we don't want to forget them, too. So you're building the relationships at the organization sort of outside of the churches in order to connect the churches right. to these exactly. resources. Exactly. Um, but you're also providing resources inside the church yes. in the form of folks like Loretta. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and once Helen, like she said, has done the legwork and um, brought the organizations to us, like the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, and given us those contacts, which we meet monthly, all the coordinators do, um, at a meeting um, every second Tuesday of the month. And so that's when Helen introduces us to the different outreach coordinators for the Heart Association and things like that. And we um, establish contact and relationship with um, those organizations. And then it's our job as coordinators then to reach out to those people that Helen has branched us with and to do our job and to then host things like the health fair and, mm -hmm. and things like that because then we have made that connection and we can um, go forth and partner then with those associations that want to get into the community to, to do the work to reduce the disparities themselves. So, What does that mean for the congregations? Um, I think it means a lot because it opens a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. What I have found um, doing this job is that People know in your congregation, you've heard of the American Heart Association, mm -hmm. everyone has. You've heard of the Diabetes Association yes. or the Arthritis Foundation, but the congregation is not sure how do they find these people if they need something. Um, if they need an advocate for someone that they know that has Alzheimer's, well, who do you contact at the Alzheimer's um, Association? So as a coordinator, um, by hosting events and bringing them in, mm -hmm then creates a connection directly for them. And now they no longer need mm. to go through me because now they know that if they need something from this organization, it was they can contact them directly. So it opens up a lot of doors um, for them to be able to find the help that they need for whatever it is that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. 